we're gonna be talking about a lot today. So, welcome on in everybody. Munchie here, your chaotic good of the small animal community. I rescue hamsters, gerbils, and mice with my team of volunteers at my rescue here in Washington State, and we take in a plethora of different small animals. Hamsters, gerbils, mice, sometimes guinea pigs and sometimes cats because it all started with a kitty named Pumpkin. And that's why I am here today to show you guys the newest surrender intake. Now, for those who are new on the channel, there's two differences between a surrender and a rescue when I talk in these videos. Rescue means I am going out and rescuing the animal that I see is in distress. I see the owner says they have to get rid of it ASAP. Nobody's stepping up to the plate and they're not familiar that they could actually transfer it over to a rescue's care and so sometimes we can approach them as a single person saying we'll help out or approach them as the rescue saying we'll help out. Sometimes that can kind of backfire because the person on the other end might be making money so we on so forth but today I have a surrender intake where the person contacted the rescue after seeing us advertise online as being a small animal rescue in her area. So today is going to be talking about this situation that you're seeing actually behind me and that's probably why I'm in a little bit of a distress right now, I get to share with you the story of two Syrian hamsters that we have come to call Lannister and Baratheon. I think they were perfect for what they look like, but let me talk about their situation. So we were contacted and the people said that they did all their research online and they tried to go for the most appropriate care for them. <laughs> You see, with my sarcastic face, I'm like, no, this is not appropriate care. What is this? So, <laughs> unfortunately, we did not really know this at the time. We do take in anything that wishes to be donated to the rescue to further use it. And there is some items here that we can use, but for others, we just simply cannot. Now, I do want to make a note that this family, when we met them in person, was loving, understanding, listened to our feedback. These people were good people, but there is kind of that misunderstanding that people have where they think they did good, but at least we gave them some critical information when we received the hamsters because they were both labeled as a male and female. But when checking, I saw that they had long hair on both of them and I'm like, that's a very big giveaway that they are both boys. So I flip them over and yes, they're both boys. So that's why they're named Lannister and Baratheon, two male long hair Syrian hamsters. Unfortunately, sometimes people just are not aware that there's incorrect information on the internet being circulated, whether it be from people who think that they know best and are promoting smaller care than maybe the rest, which that kind of rhymed. There is also care online that's being pushed out by the people who actually make the enclosures and or the products of which they say, these are great for hamsters gerbils and mice, woohoo! And then you come to find out, no, that's not correct. That's just false advertising so they can target a wide range of people who don't know any better. And the reason why they had to rehome them was they're moving out of state and for the area of which they were going to move into, it looks like they could not actually bring their small rodents with them to come live with them. And of course, during this hard time of 2020 through 2021, there is some people who have lost their homes and had to downsize or had to immediately move to an area and they tried to take into consideration all of their family members, including their animals, but couldn't. So these people definitely did care about them. The animals don't seem like they were intentionally neglected because intentional means that they did it on purpose, they know what they were doing, but there's unintentional where they thought that they were doing good and they just didn't. So that's a really big problem I tend to have in the comments under these videos where people literally want to scream profanities at these people. And yes, I understand the pain and frustration of people not doing research, but we can't really fault them if there's still bad information online. If I Googled back in like 2019 and it said as a Google search at the very top that 360 square inches is the appropriate amount of space for a hamster in the United States still, that, it's just, it's on the internet. It can't really be taken away unless the site's down or something like like that. But anyways, let's jump into what you see before me. We had two hamsters in two separate enclosures and they were both in 10 gallon tanks with tank toppers. And these are very flimsy, super flimsy. The material is very 
destructible. And I did not want to set these up, so that's why you see no ledges in here, because I just want to visually show you what they came in. So now that you see that, I just want to take them down because you guys are aware that tank toppers are not appropriate. They cannot be having vertical space. They need horizontal. Vertical actually increases the dangers for small animals because they aren't climbing animals. And hamsters get thrown into these thinking that it provides them more space up above. And you really got to be taking into consideration, you should have a bigger box in this. You shouldn't be having a height like this. They don't benefit from this. So we're taking this off, we're taking this off, and let's talk about just the base here. Now, they came with essential hamster and gerbil food. This is the food they said that the pet store where they got the hamsters from, which is a mom and pop type pet store, that's what they were feeding them. And so they thought, based off of the pet store's recommendation, Oxbow was the best option. I've already made a video discussing about this, but Oxbow is not safe to be using, at least for their hamster and gerbil formula, both the essentials and then the, I think it's garden select one, which is the other bag. But these are not acceptable because they contain hay and and it just, yeah, it's just a big mess. And it's not enough protein as a base and hamsters have starved on it. Which actually, now that we're discussing this here, Lannister is quite skinny. So is Baratheon, but Lannister was really skinny. And these guys are supposed to be around four to five months old and they're tiny and skinny. Now, long hair seared hamsters, I have had in the past where they are kind of thin, but they're super big and fluffy for whatever reason, but they're not massive when it comes to their body mass. But knowing they're being fed this, it just puts into a perspective that more than likely they were not getting what they needed from this diet, therefore was not growing as intended. The biggest mistake hamster owners make because they're just not aware of these things. Both of them got seven inch flying saucer wheels and these are the wheel colors you see at PetSmart. So not Petco, Petco has the baby blue ones in the seven inch wheel size. This right here is not appropriate. Now in the United Kingdom and places in Europe, they no longer want to register uh, flying saucers as being appropriate. There is 12 to 14 inch flying saucer wheels or treadmill wheels in the United States and other places being sold. And you can use those for Syrians. And to me, I've used them and there is some Syrians that are way too big, even for the 12 inch and they their weight just can't support that. And they're actually curving upwards. Whereas usually if they are smaller Syrians, they can run straight right on this track here and stay at the bottom. But when they start going to the top, you have a wheel problem or you have a too big of a hamster problem. And then you have to just, you know, use a classic wheel because it gives you more space for them. But just letting you guys know, seven inch wheels are definitely not appropriate for Syrians. Syrians need 10 to 12 inch wheel sizes. Now if Carlos, who I now have in the bedroom over in the corner here in the night angel enclosure, if he was still out, cause he had a quick little drink before going back into his house, I could show you how big and massive he is. However, he is an ethically bred hamster and those guys are naturally much bigger, especially since some of his genetics are from Europe in other hamsteries where those hamsters are much bigger than what you find in pet stores because they cut corners, they breed hamsters poorly, they keep pushing out genetic imperfections and it's a mess. It's a mess here in the United States and probably other places like the Philippines where there is massive amounts of hamsters being bred and they are kept in worse care than the United States and my Philippine friends out there. I am so, so sorry. Oh my gosh, you have shared with me some really disgusting images of hamsters being crammed into little tiny cages. And apparently everybody just breeds them. They just breed their own hamsters over and over and over again. And, and oh, it's, it's just terrible. Anyways, let's continue onward with what they had, which they definitely did do very well because as you can see here, there is chew toys inside of here. And chew toys, you usually don't see with people's pets, especially when it comes to PetSmart or Petco purchases where they don't tell people you desperately need chew toys. <laughs> but at least this place did tell them you need chew toys because I'm sure they also got some of their information from this mom and pop store, which I've been to this mom and pop store. Their care is not that great. They used to house rabbits and guinea pigs together, which two different nutritional based diets right there. You know, one needs vitamin C and the other one doesn't need as much vitamin C and guinea pigs suffer in that case of being housed with rabbits. So this place isn't as good, but the people there are at least nice. They are sanitary when it comes to enclosures and keeping up with that. But yeah, they have a lot of stuff 
on hand at that store, so I'm sure that they picked up some stuff. However, some of these are PetSmart exclusive chew toys. So they probably have PetSmart close by to where they lived. Now, there's clamps in here because these guys also, I guess originally, came with lids like these before they got the tank toppers. And this can definitely be repurposed for reptiles and people keeping reptiles and or fish if they want to. So these are definitely going to be sold and donations will go towards the rescue because we were donated these items. So these guys, I believe if what the owner said correctly was they had them since November, December? So they had them for at least maybe three to four months or something around those lines. But they did come with other stuff. So let me share with you what that is without having to smack off my bracelet every time. They came with the maze. Remember guys, I reviewed this maze. Isn't that insane? I actually didn't mind the maze. I definitely did return it because it just felt too small for Syrian to be like moving around in here. But this is very interesting. We can still use this at the rescue, but I would probably just put it within a larger enclosure and have them just go at it because it has their own sections. So in Instead of having that be outside of their enclosure, just add it to the inside for enrichment. So that could definitely be reused at the rescue for someone that's probably in one of the Sterilite bin cages or the 40 gallon breeder tanks. And they came with the balls, which actually they were transferred over in because it made it a little bit easier to then transfer them over to our carriers. Because um, what people tend to do is they either leave them inside the enclosure and then we have to go dig them out and try to put them in our carriers, or we ask them nicely to just have them in a box or have them in something else where we can transfer them over to our carriers or just if they're giving us like a carrier themselves just put them in the carrier and that, that works out just well too but you guys know that i have used balls in the past and i have never ever ever in my experience had an injury with balls and of course when people talk about balls they say no more than like half an hour and they can't really see in them and they smack themselves into things but play pins much better if you have personal care, use them. Unfortunately at the rescue, we are so full on space right now that we cannot use our playpen anymore. And I don't think we're ever going to use the playpen again because the amount of surrender inquiries we've been getting here in Washington state, because we're one of the few who actually takes in these animals, whereas other regional shelters will not and they will actually recommend people contact us. We're actually partnered with Seattle Humane Society, and we've also had people that had referrals from Auburn Humane Society, which is like fantastic. And so it's really cool that we have been partnered with other shelters and rescues, private rescues just like us, where we have recommended people go check them out. And just recently there was a ferret rescue in the state of Washington who has 200 ferrets and they have to find a new building to rent because their current commercial building, I guess for whatever reason, will not work out anymore. And they have to find somewhere for their 200 ferrets to go to. And just hearing that they had 200 ferrets and these ferrets have not been adopted out because everybody keeps buying from a gosh darn pet store. And some of these are actually very neglected ferrets, so they have to remain there. They're kind of like sanctuary ferrets. It's just so devastating. And I really wish people would learn more about rescues and what we have to go through. And when I say we, I mean me and my team because there's people out there doing this and it's not just me. <laughs> it's not just me collecting all these animals and then trying to find them homes. It's very frustrating when you're trying to work against the system where people keep pushing pet store hamsters, where I really wish people would just think adoption first. And if you really can't find one, the last option obviously would be a pet store, but I really hope people's minds would be changed to look online, look at rescues and or ethical breeders who actually give a damn about where they're animals are going and how you are supposed to appropriately raise them. Boom! Anyways, balls. I've actually only had one injury from a ball that wasn't moving and people say use them as hides. Definitely use them as little rat hides. They would love that, but hamsters I'm not gonna do because one of them tried climbing one of them, Star, if you guys remember Star, and she had a slit right here and she got her toenails stuck as she was trying to climb it, which is, that's not, these aren't supposed to be inside enclosures. I don't like that. Ta tape it up maybe, sure, but then they could chew on the tape, glue it up, but glue it with appropriate glue. But then again, hamsters, they like going after stuff like silicone. So I don't know how successful that would be if you just glued every little crevice in these. I just say, don't use them. <laughs> just don't use 
awesome. So these are definitely going to be recycled at the rescue. We're not gonna use them. There was a point in my life where I'm like, okay, I need to give them more time and it has been successful in the past, but right now I just don't have enough time as a rescue to actually take all am animals out and handle them for longer periods of time. But I'm so glad that we have foster homes now that they are helping with that and to work with specific animals that need more time outside their enclosures and with handling. So woo, kudos to them. And lastly, I have not really dived into this right here. I did put all these inside of there because I just needed them to go away. So these I haven't touched yet, so I don't know exactly what's in here. We have stuff at the rescue that was already set up prior to them coming. And I was gonna make this video a lot sooner, so this video has actually been postponed due to the amount of increase at the rescue and just my personal life. I have not been able to just sit down in front of a camera, say hi to you guys, and actually show you what these guys came with. So we're kind of doing this together here. But um, this feels wet for some reason. Why? Were these water bottles leaking? Because there's water bottles in here, but it looks like we got some hides here. We got this. Now, even though the opening right here is not big enough for a Syrian hamster, there is an opening down here. I personally would not give this exact hide to Syrians. We use these for dwarf hamsters and Chinese hamsters. But for Syrians, if you guys ever have a smaller hide, and sometimes I just don't like seeing those hides, make sure that it has an open bottom so they can easily get out of it. If you have a closed off space, a hamster is going to struggle in this and they might accidentally injure themselves in this. So definitely don't ever have something that has a closed off bottom and should be made for a dwarf hamster, not a Syrian. So yeah, just keep in mind. We got two very long water bottles that, yes, there's water in them and they've been leaking for God knows how long. Ah! How long have you been leaking in here? I guess maybe they just recently started leaking because they were actually like this inside the bag. And my bracelet fell off again. Okay, I hate that bracelet now. We got some treats in here. We got the munchies. <laughs> It's me, a munchy snacks. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Ideal for rabbits, guinea pigs, hamsters, mice, and other small animals. Haven't really checked these out, but okay. Apple slices. That's pretty cool. Okay. I have to check the expiration dates for these because some people actually gift us donations and I checked the food and it says it expired like three, five months ago. So I'm like, oh, I can't use any of this. <laughs> so we got some more. We got some papaya bites. Papaya is natural, but it does have sugar in it. So just give it to a moderation. Pineapple bites, same with pineapple. And these are bigger chunks too. So if you see stuff like coconut uh, slices, they have few sugars in them. So it's not like overloaded with sugars, but with stuff like this, definitely give in moderation. Like make sure it's just every once in a blue moon. I do not know when the camera shut off because I don't know where I left off. So panic munchie, here we go. Party sticks, hmm. We got willow sticks, hmm. We got other willow sticks, hmm. We got tropical adventure treat, hmm. So that is that. And thank you guys so much for watching the intake of Lannister and Baratheon. Hopefully in this video, I did share with you some of the images of them as well as some video of them. The boys are actually very not okay with touchy touchy, no touchy touchy pretty much, but they do seem to be very curious, especially Lannister. Lannister likes to come out and say, hey, hey, you got food, right? You got food. And Baratheon's like, I'm tired. I'm just gonna be in my like ramen hide that you currently have for me inside my enclosure. And oh, you got food? Okay, well, I'm a little bit nervous, but I'll come out. Oh, I don't like being handled. Oh, she's handling me. At the rescue, it's just always an adventure and it's always fun to learn about these guys and their personality. I can spend hours in there and waste my time just looking at them all. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, hit like. If you'd like to leave a comment down below, you're welcome to do so in regards to this video or any topics discussed and subscribe if you're new here and would like to become a part of the Munchkin family. Thank you so much for your contribute to the very end and thank you so much for continuously supporting the channel. Have a great day. Ta-ta. Wait, what does this motion do? I don't want to insult anyone. I, I feel like I have a hat on, okay guys? Oh God, I have to over explain. Bye.